What are your first impressions of Tom Brady? Dude's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Call it handsome. <laughs> I literally walked in through the locker room. I had my big ass like twenty inch binder of plays because we used to have playbooks. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. I walked in, almost dropped it. I'm like, damn, he's tall. He's handsome. <laughs> well, he got Giselle. <laughs> Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, brought to you by our friends at Buffalo Wild Wing, hey. aka BW3s. For a limited time, check out their new sauces, General So, with a T, and a Sweet Chili Lime. They won't be around forever, so get them while the supplies last. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. My big brother, Jason Kelsey. Subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Follow the show on social media at New Heights Show with one S. This is a special episode, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Our guest today is seventh round pick out of Kent State. He's third all time in postseason receptions. Damn. He's one of six players in NFL history to have two 100 yard receiving games in a Super Bowl. Damn. And he is, of course, a three time Super Bowl champion. Our guest is Super Bowl MVP. MVP, Ooh. Mr. Julian Edelman, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> what an intro. What an yeah, intro. Man. Fire him I, up. I, I Fire him up. I used to be too until this fucking, this, this guy who plays tight end like a receiver, but also <laughs> can block. Like, he just passed me, this dude. I don't know who you, What's his name? Yeah. Rob Gronkowski? No. <laughs> no. no, not Rob. <laughs> Some other, some other. It's it, I, I can't, I can't read. Just kind of like you. Shout out so. Pat Mahomes, baby. Good luck, Pat Mahomes. <laughs> no, it's good to be here, man. Thanks for having me. No, we're on this thing, dog. You already yeah. know, man. You already know. We're Been watching get into you guys. It. You guys are doing good things, big things. Thanks, brother. Big things. What's new in the life of uh, Julian Edelman? Just retirement life. You How's know, that? Good and bad and fun and boring. <laughs> it's, it's like everything. It's a whirlwind. <laughs> it's a whirlwind. You know, I was I was talking to Trav before. I was like, you know, you miss when you could say no to things because you had a set schedule all the time <laughs> because you have organized team activities. You got mini camps. I'm just you got so training. busy. So busy. I can't go it's to your just... wedding. Can't do this. Now I have to go to weddings. <laughs> you have to come I on podcast. I have to go to weddings. I have to go to pot. You know what I mean? It, it's it's. But it, it, yes. It, it's awesome. Uh, you know, I'm getting a lot more time with my family, my little girl. Yeah, so you just moved back out to California. I moved back out here to be with her. As you guys know, you sacrifice so much family time, friend time, so many things when you're living out your career and your dream that, you know, as soon as you retire, you're going to see, like, you got to make up some time for all the the birthdays Stuff you missed, you, kind of put, the, yeah. This, yeah. you know, the that. So for sure doing that and then, you know, doing TV stuff, had a contract year last year. So in the talks with some potential, you see what we got going here. Ooh, I don't, I don't know if I go. can say All anything right and podcast games with names, Yeah, Tried, you know, getting that world like you guys we got a production company, digital ad agency, coast production, super digital. You're getting yeah. into and I got a new dog. He's lying right here. He's, he likes yeah. the. That's I'll tell you what, it's Rocky a good looking pup friends. right there. He's man. come through the door. Well, I mean, Rocky, Philly, I mean, we, you know, I, I didn't even. That's that. what it I was. thought it was just because I smelled like food. Uh, could be that. <laughs> <laughs> like a bacon bit. We always get to this first. It's one of the things we do every show. We get new news, but we have every guest give us their new news is a segment, and we jump it off by saying new. But news. Since you're the of. guest, you say new news. Well, how do I do it? A new news. Yeah, well, that would that would work. So Are you? New. Nice. I, might, I, mean, I like that. I think That's a that, good vibe He to just it. jumped that motherfucker off right he's, there. He's, he's a pro. Who he's a pro. <laughs> We're just new. You just brought up Games of Names. Games of Names. You're coming up with Season 2 coming up? Season 2 is coming up. What are the big games? Can you, like preview any that you're kind of looking forward to getting to? We, uh, not quite yet. We okay. got, we're still working out that whole situation. I got a couple of Philadelphia games I'm going to need you to come on and a couple Chief games I'm going to need you to come Say on. No the Kelsey more, Bowl. We, we, we need the Kelsey Bowl, maybe both. Okay. Let's do it. A little joint. You know, we've only had Bang two. Up. We had Eli and Brewski for the 18-1 and one, where we had both yes. sides, the win and the loser. I, it's tough to ask someone to come on and talk about a losing game. Yeah. You know, so I, I wasn't going to ask you that. I was going to have him ask you that. <laughs> that's smart man, smart but, man. Uh, since you said, yeah, Kelsey Bull. Yeah, we got the Kelsey Bull coming. <laughs> All right, that's on. Kelsey Bull. Um, Get that thing turned up. Yeah. Travis is called being a podcaster the hardest job. Is that what I said? I think this is when we first started. Yeah, no. All right. But well, that's because agree? I have to read. Is, <laughs> what's, what is, is podcasting harder than being a world-class receiver, one of the best postseason receivers of all time? 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because like we we're comfortable in that environment. You know, like now we got to like you got to carry time. You got shot clocks. You got to get to certain points. Yeah. You got to make people that know about the subject understand the subject while entertaining the people that know the subject and keep them entertained. Oh, like it's, yeah. it's a whole lot of it's an art. And, you know, you, you definitely respect all the people that are on TV. And you, you look at like the how cow and cowards and you look at like man, the Jim oh, Rome's and all these people. Like when you retire, you may not agree with what they say, but you're like, these people are pretty talented. They know what the, for sure. they know how to talk. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean? You gain a new pers perspective and uh, respect for the craft, for sure. 100%. Yeah. We, had, we had Unk come through here, Shannon Sharp come in here. Yeah. I was actually sitting right where you were. And he, I was talk. all ears, man. You talk about a guy that is, that is just buttoned up in that world and uh, made the transition. It was eye-opening just to hear how he goes through some things. Because you would think he's thinking of all this the night before. Every, no. He's just like, nah, give me everything day of so I can just rip it. He goes day like, of? I'm just like... He, he said he gets a rundown the night before, but he he, he goes over most of it day of. Yeah. He wants it to be authentic. I that, don't know. That's the thing. My mind doesn't work like that. <laughs> I got to prepare. I gotta, like, you're better off the cuff, too. I got to read it ahead. Otherwise, I'm, I, I won't be... I'll, I'll feel out of sync. I treat it like my like when I was playing. Like I have to have a routine. I got to do like a pregame. Like I would get to the studios when I'm doing inside the NFL, and I'd be like the first guy there. I just want to feel out the people, talk to a couple of the camera guys, get what they're saying, the people that are around New York. Yeah, like you want to get perspective. Heck yeah. You jump all that in, and then you, like with all the stuff you're preparing for, and then like as it went on more and more, I was like, man. I kind of over prepared too much and then a couple of times I wouldn't prepare as much and then yeah. you just like it rips it mm -hmm. becomes more authentic like Shannon does so that's like the key whatever works for whatever Heck yeah. you, know, whatever you, you, you just mentioned kind of relating it back to your playing days yeah. Gronk was on the show and he talks all the time about how he never watches film he never watched any film apparently is that the Patriot way no <laughs> <laughs> no Gronk played so much I mean they could only do three things like four things you know what I mean to, to him I mean it's right. either too high where he's bending it or it's single high where he's staying up the scene <laughs> and it, then blows someone up unstoppable yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was the crazy thing about Gronk is Gronk's low key like Rain Man. Dude, dog. Like, I can see you it. throw numbers out there. Gronk knows numbers real well. When the coach would get on him early in his career and like he never made that mistake again. Like he, his football knowledge is like outrageous. So if it, huh. he does sees it once and he does it. Yeah, it's there for good, and that's just how he was. He was like a huh. savant when it came to like fucking Rain Man. So, definitely, you throw out like contract numbers. I would walk by the hallway, and be like, "Yo, what's the square root of like a thousand twenty-two?" He'd be like, sixty-four or whatever. I'd be like, "What?" Have you ever been to the casino with him? I tried to bring him once. But <laughs> he can't hide him. Everyone comes up to him. Yeah. You know, and it, it wouldn't be good with the eye in the sky. I got, I'm, I'm Gronsky. It would be signal. It would be terrible. It would be terrible. But he's he's a fuck, he's a smart football player. He right. was at tight end you, man. And when I tell you his passion for his fucking teammates, man. Yeah. And it seemed like you guys all played with that in, in New England. It was like the only way that you made the team is if you played for the guy next to you. Yeah. When, when he came on the show i think that was one of the bigger things even just talking you get that right away yeah there's a perception i feel like of gronk where he's like the big dumb jock i feel like like he's got the new york accent he ran people over but like you actually sit down and talk to him as like man this dude's like he's, he's flanking yeah he's flanking. for sure he's flanking he's flanking <laughs> god I love he ain't flanking. flanking he's going right to your yeah, face right he is yeah he, that's, he that's all manpower flank. right there i remember his rookie year remember kevin vandebosch yeah of course. He ended his career. You remember the little toss crack? Oh, it, yeah. was, it was early when the toss crack was coming. You where you, You'd come in, you sneak him. Now everyone knows the toss yeah. crack. Oh, the tight end's coming from outside. Here comes. Tight end comes in, comes down on Van Vandebosch, breaks his neck. And Vandebosch was getting all up in him all game. Like, hey, puppy, I'm coming after you. And like Gronk hits him. And, and like. That was it. And Vandebosch just got paid like a boatload of money. He was like the man for that that time. Of the, it was 2010. So. Is this when he's in Detroit? Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. He just came down. Bop. Yeah, he was like a intimidating player on the field. He had like red eyes or something like that, right? Yes. Then he had like a special contact. I think it was before. I don't think you ever played Vandenbosch, did nope. you? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was Gronk crazy. Broke his neck. <laughs> Gronk ended that. I think yeah. he. I, I don't know if he ended it, but he he broke his neck or back that that game. Uh, it was he, crazy because it was like he was a monster. He was a monster. You had to game plan for a guy like him all week. We've been talking. This Vandenbosch guy could ruin the fucking day. We got to get him blocked. Blah, 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 blah. And Gronk goes in. Bah! 
knocks him out out of the game and ended up blowing him out. That's a good way to God, Damn, I love football back in the day, man. We can't do that stuff. Can't anymore, do anything. Man. Can't do anything. It's still crack blocking. You can It's hard. they know it's coming now. No, 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 no but no, even no. like you, later, you can get to your point. Yeah. Anytime you hit somebody in the head, it's it can be like a uh they're, he, a they're blind a defenseless side, player, yeah. Defenseless player. Yeah. They're soft. It's like the crackback rule. Even when you're going in for the force. Like if you're coming to get the safety. Dude, we we got to talk about this cuz we were watching highlights getting ready for this. You got for as unbelievable as receiver you were. You, you got, are the you toughest son of a bitch I've ever you fucking took seen some play fucking football. Hits. You were out there getting, ru- dude, but willingly, like not even a, a, sh- a shred of doubt. I'm going up getting this ball. I know what's happening. Like Doesn't you turn matter. on your highlights, you are taking shots. I mean, someone's got to. <laughs> Let's go. Let's fucking go. No, I, you know, so that was my job. Yeah, you know, and that's how I made my opportunity. I had to be fearless going across the middle, and I had to do the dirty work a lot of I time, it, digging out the force. Yeah. In New England, that's what they expect of that that guy in that position. You know, a guy like I, I move me to F, Z, X, make me versatile. But like coming, you took down, it to another level because I mean, I would assume like kind of Welker was. Troy. In, it started with Troy Brown. Troy Brown, Troy Brown okay. was in the Z, and then Welker kind of magnified it and did what, what Welk was like one of the best route runners I've ever seen. Like dude. the first couple years when I was with him, I was like, this dude's a fucking monster. <laughs> he was so small and so quick. Even on a press coverage, he could get like four steps in and he'd be doing his head shit. <laughs> <laughs> he could get guys to turn their hips and just pop up and get in. Get like his, his release came and his routes, they were fucking sick. And, you know, honestly, it was a huge part of you know, how I got to learn the position, you know, I came in playing quarterback, you know, so like I got to watch him and I got to take tidbits from fucking Randy Moss, Joey Galloway, like all these guys. And even what's Randy telling you, just be bigger and faster than everybody and jump up and catch Like, I just remember Randy, how he (laughs) Jules, Hey Jules. (laughs) He used to call me Edelnut. (laughs) Edelnut? Hey Edelnut, get my hot tub about 103 and get my Gatorade. That's where we used to have the metal tubs. Yes. You know, you have metal tubs and hot tub. Yes. He never wanted to go in the regular hot tub. He had to have his own shit with the little, he had to have this, uh, it was like menthol rubbing alcohol in there. Fucking <laughs> and he'd go, Edelnut, go get my towel, my Gatorade, make that hot tub by 103, 102. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. <laughs> this one time. What a legend. Yes, sir. This, <laughs> this one time, Randy, it was like the day before Christmas and we had to work. We had a game on Christmas or something, and Randy was talking to his mom. And I just walked by. I was like, hey, hey Randy, tell Mama Moss. I said, you know, Merry Christmas. He goes, Edelnut, when I'm talking to my motherfucking mom, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally went like this. Gosh. I looked at... And I fucking just... I walked away. Yeah. He made eye contact. I was so scared. I was a rookie. He's like, don't you fucking talk to me when I'm talking to my mom. <laughs> But he'd always love me up too, you know? Of course, yeah. Yeah. You know, but like you could learn things from him, like how he tracked the ball. Like like in one-on-ones, he would sit and run and it looked like he wasn't running and the ball would come. And we all know that the DBs play hands. So yeah. when you throw your hands out there, DBs are going to try to come through. Yeah. He would just run and the ball would come right there and he'd just boop and just pop his little hands out the last <laughs> second, you know? So you could take things from anyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially as a route runner. Was Welker, like, did he help you out with the route running and all this stuff? Like, or was it more just like watching him do it? Watching. You know, I love Welk to death, you know, but he was kind of like the asshole older brother, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was there to take his job yeah. and he was there to. Well, that ended up happening yeah, when he got I'm, hurt, right? And you kind of got an opportunity. I know what an asshole older brother is, man. That is, it's yeah. a tough position to be in as the younger brother. I feel like I could be way more of an asshole. Oh, you thought I was talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a professional athlete and you're a young guy trying to come in. Yeah. And you ask a question, sometimes guys are like, dude, just watch a fucking tape. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like all right. You know, I was trying to be a sponge. Perfect, yeah. That was the last time I asked him a question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I learned so much just from taking mental reps while watching him, like, on one-on-ones. And then oh, yeah. my third year in, I had to cover him. So I knew all his routes and shit. Dude, so, oh, my god. I was playing DB a little bit. So I would always just hold him. I knew he was fucking he <laughs> it was fucking. It was fun. There's no officials out there in practice. The DB 
DBs we, know that. We, they always hold in practice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking oh, yeah. kill. Every, every, team, every team in fucking the entire league has red gloves every time they play us, man. Fucking damn it. We're just red jerseys. Hey. It's harder to see the hold. Bill used to fucking Do you think that's a strategy? 1,000%. Bill, Bill used to make us. Really? I would wear red gloves and I got a hold. <laughs> You're <laughs> telling me I need to be wearing gloves of the team I'm playing. 100. What? They can't see it. They can't see the pull. Why have I never thought about this? Belichick, <laughs> I got a holding call once. They were wearing white jerseys and I always wore red gloves, all reds. And I got like a holding. He goes, you see? Fucking red gloves over here. <laughs> I mean, I can, me and Ernie can see that from the fucking press box. <laughs> And then he gets to you. Some real prima donna shit, right? You know, like, yeah. Like, you just got to be different. <laughs> GDI, like, goddamn individual. He won 35 to 4, coach. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus. No, nah, but he used He's to talk about that an all opportunity. the time. He used really? to talk about Ninkovic all the time about that. Ninko? What? Do yeah. We, what color? Oh, no, uh, no, Cannon. I was about to say, I thought Ninkovic didn't wear gloves. No, he wore gloves. He wore those the Lyman glove. Oh, nice. Uh, Yeah, he tried to. When you were getting towards the end of your career, back to the uh, the Welker thing, were, was there somebody that you was coming up? Yeah. Were you trying to help him or welcome? Welcome. No, I, welcome. no I, it was. <laughs> we had we were cool, but like I you know, know yeah. whatever. But I did remember that, like when Jacoby Myers came up. Mm -hmm. You know, he was I was around him. I remember those days. Yeah. And so I I was at the point where like I was confident in my abilities, so like I'll give him everything I knew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you're done with the game, the only thing that goes on forever is the knowledge that you give other guys that, i'm sure. with you on that you know what i mean Absolutely. so that's yeah, kind of something that like i remember that there was of course some younger guys that are like slap dicks that you're like ah, dude. yeah <laughs> but for the guys that are, are genuinely trying to are, get better they're, they're, they're trying, trying to get improve. better like it's only putting make the work in better yeah. it, you know iron sharpens iron the better the the 53rd guy is the better the team is yeah no doubt Love that's it, the patriot baby. way right there that is <laughs> you, you huh? can tell. that's the patriot way what is the patriot way we asked Gronk this. What Gronk say? He, I think he said, basically, I don't, I don't want to butcher it. Um, Paraphrase. This isn't. This is. I know. A word. Do your job. Unselfish. Is I, I, I think that's pretty. Much I think, I'm pretty sure you're on point with it. You didn't make it seem like it was like the most complicated thing ever. No, it's not. But it, I, I think it comes from Bill puts a template in place. This is how it's supposed to be done. You see him in a meeting, he's going to motherfuck everyone. He makes everyone accountable. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many years you have, how many Super Bowl rings you have, what your stats are, who you are, what school you went to. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He just wants to get better. He's going to coach to coach. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the best players on the team or, like, the older players in the team, I think the Patriot way is those guys working their dicks off working their asses off, being the first ones in, the last ones out, the Teddy Brewskis when I was a rookie in organized team activities, fucking doing scout team punt, you know, like that. Because if the 53rd guy or the 90th guy in sees OTA that. sees Teddy Brewski running down, giving stab technique on punt, you can't not do it. Yeah. Right. So then everyone's on eggshells all the time. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's just a, a form of like people being accountable, your best players working their hardest, putting the team first you know there was always a sign in the in the facility that said you know mental toughness it's doing what's best for the team when it's not necessarily best for you mm -hmm. you know and that's kind of that's it that's it you need to have your best players acting that way no doubt tom brady yeah this guy's first one in last one out working this guy got a quarterback coach and he's 38 years old he's got four or five super bowls already at the time and he's flying them out in the bye week you know to get reps with them like that's what you want to see is you guys always constantly learning guys never satisfied yeah and, and that's kind of what i think the patriot way is <laughs> we talk about that shit <laughs> well, it beca way. becomes a thing when you win what six super bowls or Sorry, yeah, six. yeah i only got three uh, well yeah Wait, i hope door, i can dude. get three you're knocking on that door. You guys, you guys can do it this really year bad. too. Whoa, yeah. he's got to get a ton. I mean, you got, you guys got an easy road there. The AFC is crazy the AFC is right a tough now. One, yeah, we play the AFC East this year. We, we a, actually got a tough uh, tough schedule, but the NFC's got an easy road, no doubt about it. It's just quarter. All the quarterbacks are in the AFC right now. Yeah, yeah and, except for one, Jalen Hurts. Hey, that's a good one to have. That is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take. And he just got paid. <laughs> 
He did. Yeah. Is it a team friendly deal? That, uh, how, how, does, how, how does Howie do this? I, I swear everyone's paid. Yeah. You guys are drafting like top six, getting the guy from Georgia and shit. And this has been my whole career. I feel like he's always been a master in understanding the cap and, yeah. and how to understand what's going to happen down the road. The COVID year was a little bit of a wild card because that was such a different year for the cap. But those guys at all times know how to do it, know how to manipulate it. Jalen's contract, I don't think it's, it's not like team friendly. It's like both parties friendly. Like he's still getting paid. Yeah. But like this year's hit is not high. It's a low cap hit this year. What do they give him a bunch of signing bonus? He plays for like a million bucks on like as salary. Exactly. And it, it, they prorate it out. I mean, yeah. Trips, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like I kicking just the never can. See how other teams do it. I, I I don't know why other teams don't do it either. I do know that Howie, when he was in college, he did like his thesis on the NFL salary cap. So, like, he's These, been, like, doing this for a while. Roseman. Yeah. Jew. Hypothesis? <laughs> Isn't that what well, that is? Good enough. You know about that. But <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I met your mom at Super Bowl. Did you? Let's go. Yeah. Did you see the Saints? She's yeah, an at, at the angel. steakhouse. I was at the steakhouse, and I, someone was like, "That's a Kelsey." I, I gotta go meet the Kelsey. Oh hell, oh, yeah. man! Yeah, you're a legend for that. that. She was fired up. I, I was like, I, I gotta know who spit these two guys out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, She's she was a, a sweetheart. Your dad was awesome. It was yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, I was appreciate awesome. that, in, man. I, I tell everybody this: in two weeks, she did more endorsement deals than I did in 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> she retired two years ago and is making more money off the field right now than both of us. Right. That's that's mom. Yeah, man. She's killing she it. She should be for what she had to put up with. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine teenage years with you guys. The amount of milk and the amount of cum everywhere. <laughs> Just come everywhere. Oh Probably my God. Just stealing girlfriends. Oh my goodness. Don't, don't you dare bring a black <laughs> light cow. around the Kelsey household, boy. That I'm just was saying. unbelievable. <laughs> I'm just saying, teenage boys. Good thing they never took one of them black lights right over the keyboard. Dude. <laughs> They came out with that one show on MTV where yeah. they would like raid somebody's room. Like, I hope they never hit mine. They go through I'm this. Never applying this. for that show. <laughs> yeah, room raiders. Room raiders. Room raiders. Oh my god. Holy that show. cow. We're gonna see what my boyfriend is doing. Gallon. Let's see what this black light can do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! That it's on the amazing. ceiling. Never fit. Yeah. How? How? It's a stalactite. <laughs> I just went to Morning ca Caves with my daughter. That's why I have that. What is that? That's why you got yeah. the stalactite. Yes. Yeah, kids, kids. We're thinking yeah, about kids. Yeah. Kids. Kid friendly show. <laughs> Kid friendly show. But yeah, oh Patriot Way, goodness. baby. <laughs> New Heights is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings Trap. You know I have hot takes when it comes to boneless versus traditional bone-in wings, or as I like to call them, chicken nuggets versus actual chicken wings. Well, our friends at B-Dubs are giving you guys a free chance to settle the debate. That's a good point, and I love chicken nuggets just as much as I love boneless chicken wings. On National Chicken Wing Day, Saturday, July 29th, B-Dubs is giving away six boneless nuggets or boneless wings or traditional wings to America. Hey! When you spend a minimum of $10, that's it. You just gotta go in there with $10 and you get some free shit. Mm. Available for dine-in only while supplies last. I think that means while they have chicken carcasses. It's a good point. As long as they got nuggets. And they probably won't run out of those. You just need $10. Yeah. And you'll get six more for free. They got plenty of that. Probably have whatever sauce you want. No, no, no. The sauces are also limited supply only. Well, of course. But as long as they got it, you can do whatever sauce you want, I yeah. bet. I'm pretty sure it's whatever they got in the back for as long as they got it. All right, we also need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking during the show every single day, and that's Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Man! Woo! If you've been looking for some zero sugar. Give it to me. That gives you sustained energy. Of course. That gets your metabolism going. Huh? And that gives you an enhanced focus that needs to record a podcast. That's right. You got to check out Accelerator Active Energy Drink, man. This shit works. It does. Dude, it's crazy. If you can't tell. <laughs> What flavor you like drinking? Right now, I got rocket pop. I'm popping up like a rocket. <laughs> pow, pow! Accelerator Active Energy is available nationwide at Target, Meyer, and Sheets. 
Dude, all right. Since you did mention oh, the yeah. Patriot Way, and you already kind of mentioned Jacoby, I got to jump right into it. Last year, we had the most electrifying play of arguably the NFL. Patriot Roulette against the yeah. Raiders. Yeah. Where Mac- That's a weak thing. The no, 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 uh, we're calling no, no, the no, play no, no. that uh, I'm talking about what Jacoby happened. lateral it on the on the key oh. draw to end the game. Dude, or, when you saw that, trying to go to overtime, did you like put yourself in that team meeting the next month, that Monday or Tuesday, on what Bill was going to say to the team? Like, what did you think? Did you think about his head was just going to explode that? <laughs> right in the moment? See, that's that's where Bill doesn't get you. Oh, really? Bill, he he knows how to read the room. Like, he's going to cut you down when you blow a team out. Gotcha. Yeah, when, when there's a devastating loss mm. and you guys are on a couple game skid, it's probably one of those 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 Monday morning meetings where like, guys, we did enough to win the game, but we lost it. Let's move on from this. Price short. Let's move on to the next game. Like, yeah, like he, he's 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 pretty good at that. When we were in like shitty situations, or like we weren't playing well, or if it was like a loss in December, or, yeah. or no, like late November, where you're trying to get on your streak, you're trying yeah. to get going, like that's when you know we weren't having State of the Union. State of the Union is usually we're after like blowout wins or you know wins where we thought we were doing well. Bring you back down. It felt real good. Yeah. Hey, we still got to improve here. We still got a ways to yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's that's, that's kind of what. That's he, why he's, that's that makes why? sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So like I'm sure he. There was a little motherfucking of the, the coaches probably got motherfucked. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I've I, I've never been in those meetings, but I've heard that it's, like it gets pretty brutal. It gets he brutal. keeps everybody accountable. Everyone. Yeah. You got to. I was fucking pissed off. It was so weird. What I have, fifty <laughs> like, grand on the the eight and a half under over. <laughs> Fifty grand on it, and that would have been nine games. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I was at the game. Yeah, I had a oh, couple no, cocktails. <laughs> I was in a denim. I was in a denim Dan what fucking we, Canadian tuxedo, your, having the time of my life with the Raider fans talking shit. Oh my god! All of a sudden, we throw fucking the annexation of Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking, I was so. What was, was your so first thought on the first lateral? Like what? Do, dude, like I, I just oh remember seeing. I was like, what the what the hell is going on? I think he was just stunned. No, I think he they, was stunned. There's, I think there's that, no way that was a that was not in the game plan. It was no, definitely one, it couldn't have been in the play. Not, but, I'm just saying. But who in their mind at that moment? I'm gonna ladder. Like I, I just how much like, time was on the clock? It was the last play. They were just trying was to the like, last play. Yeah, well, I think there's a chance overtime. Overtime. Yes. I mean, maybe there's a chance you could get up and out. You know I don't what? Know. That was the the crazy thing to me last year with the Pats, the situational football. That's what we usually had a premium mm-hmm. on. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what Bill's known for for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, like playing I think, against you guys, it felt like a lot of the time, especially early on in my career, you guys were just controlling the game because of those situations, without a doubt. When they were ahead of the game too, with some of the things that they would do, they. Bill Bill knew the rules better than anybody, and he would have these plans in his head for weird situations that would arise. Dude, I remember, like, you know the free kick situation where, yeah. like, the last play of the half? I swear to God, we practiced that 12 years career. Every fucking Friday has never come up. Never come Not up. Not once. It hasn't once. come up since, like, 1986. Yeah. Yeah. But we practiced that situation just in yeah. case we want to line up for the free oh, yeah. kick before the half. Yeah. It's crazy. And then there's a lot of times where you're like, why the fuck are we practicing this stupid-ass situation? Yeah. And it comes up in the game, yeah. and it, it ends up handling out, like, what he said it was going to handle out. <laughs> And you just sit back and you're like, this guy's pretty fucking I guess that's smart. why we do it. He's pretty smart. <laughs> that's <laughs> legendary. Against you guys, we just wanted to keep it close. You always keep it I close. Wanna, I did not want to keep it close. What is that? Was, who was, was that the enemy? Give yourself a chance to have a chance. Have a chance. <laughs> yeah. Chance, baby. Just give, just, just give me a chance to have a chance. Just keep it close to the end. You heard it, DC. Let's rewind a little bit. That dog. I don't know where we are right now. Well, we're not on a script love, at all. We're I just having a conversation. I do get a. We're both life. from Ohio. You went to Kent State. Quarterback. First of all, can't read, can't write, can't stay. Yeah. <laughs> Say it right, baby. How in the hell we did you to, end we up? We used to fly around on that campus as kids yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yep. We yeah. played Cleveland Heights, right? Cleveland yes, Heights. We would, you ever go to Swenson's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Burgers. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. I heard they got weak Burgers. now, though. The Galley Boy, that was like prime yeah. burger. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have not heard they sold in a, owners in a while. or something. Come on, Swenson's. You can't nice. be doing this. I heard there's a place in Akron that's doing way better. What's going on? The 440. How did you end up in Hold it down. I went to Juco. I was a JUCO guy out oh, okay. of high school. Where'd you play JUCO? Uh, Where'd you go? College of San Mateo. 
not familiar. It's, yeah, it's in the Bay Area where I just like ten minutes from where I grew up. There's a lot of there's a lot of good junior college football in the Bay Area. And there was a connection somehow to Kent. Or no, just, I was a qualifier to high school. I took the SATs. I had pretty good grades. Just didn't get recruited. And yeah. then played quarterback at CSM and lit it up. There's a couple schools that called and a lot of schools wanted me to like change positions and they didn't have a scholarship. They wanted me to stay one more year. And Kent came out and they said, hey, we will let you compete for our job right now. And I went over and watched a spring practice. Went to Ohio as a California kid with spiky hair. <laughs> <laughs> spring, it was snowing. I'm yeah. like... I could probably start here right now. So, <laughs> so I decided. I got this. Gotta love a good, gotta love a good yeah. action, baby. It was awesome. I loved Ohio, man. Salty the earth people. Yep. It was crazy to me because I grew up in like a crazy melting pot. Mm. Like in the Bay Area, you have everything. For sure. I went to Ohio. There's only white and black people. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Everyone drives American made cars. Oh, yeah. yep. Never seen that in my life. Everywhere. It was like Detroit. a crazy culture shock. And like the people were just like blue collar people that work nine to fives, loved coming home to watch Ohio State or the Cleveland Browns or the commander. What are they? The. Guardians. Guardians, yeah. Guardians. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That's a Cleveland thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like salt of the earth people. And like I had I had a lot of great relationships and I still stay in contact with a lot of people from Northeast Ohio. I yeah. love it. Yeah, there's something about Ohio that I mean you just summed it up. Yeah, we're lucky to be from there. It's but boring. Love it. Don't get me wrong. Well, now you're losing. You didn't have any, yeah, you didn't have any fun now. up there? I had a lot of fun. Didn't have any fun I, over I mean, there at Kent State? I had a not lot of fun. That right? I had a lot of fun, but like, there's only so many times I can go to Rockney's. <laughs> <laughs> I can only go to Rockney's so many times for the wedge fry. All right? You know, like, I respect it. I respect you know, it. No Mexican food. I'm from California. I didn't have no oh, burritos. Yeah, no. There's Chipotle. definitely not Mexican there's food. There's none of you that. Know, like, it was cool. It was just different fun that I was used to. Yeah. You know, I was just going like the skate park and shit. Like, out there you go, like, cow tipping and shit. Playing cards. Sandusky, Ohio with Brake Callahan Brake Pads. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever go to Cedar Point up in Sandusky? I did. Yeah, I went to Cedar man. Point. We used to do that once a, once a summer after summer workout, the whole team. Dude, let's go ride some roller coasters. Yeah, let's go ride some <laughs> roller coasters in our, our tank tops and you're all shredded up. <laughs> Stupid. Leave there with... <laughs> well, yeah. Oh. You get selected by the Patriots. Yeah. Did you know you were going to be a receiver from the moment they picked you? Yeah, I was about to say, like, you were saying you were playing a little DB. Was there a question on which side of the ball you were going to play? Or No, nah, I mean, I started training over at, in Euclid, Ohio, over at uh, Speed Euclid Strength. Euclid Sports Plant, Are you baby. Me? Yeah, yeah. No, you already know. Dude, we were in there. Yeah. We went there. Yeah. All day, every day. I, that's where I trained for my combine or for my pro day. No way. Yeah. Um, did you get asked to take steroids in there? Because no. guaranteed those things were going around in that place. You, know, you think so? <laughs> during the day? Did Why did you we see get the, offered it? Early we were in the morning. kids. <laughs> I, That's we when you want to start it, right? That's what I'm saying. During don't, the day, don't, don't you saw the bodybuilders come Yeah, no. Thing. The one in the railroad tracks? Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't see anyone that wasn't a football player there. Yeah, I agree. I don't remember the bodybuilders. I'm, I'm, I'm missing I this. used to go up there for like AAU tournaments because they had the big court right yeah, there. Yeah, they had yes. a bunch of courts. Yes. And they had a grass field inside, maybe? Indoor soccer. soccer. Dude, it you're was. taking me back right now. Yeah. So I, I went out there and Charlie Fry, he was the starting quarterback for the Browns for a little bit. And then he was at the Raiders at the time. He saw me running around. He saw me training. And he's like, yo, I'm going to go to Akron Tuesdays and Thursdays. Why don't you come with me? I need someone to throw to. I didn't know how to run routes or anything. And, and so, like, he kind of coached me up. And he would come throw up my, like, workouts and shit. He would come when the team was going to work me out. He'd come to Kent and come throw to me. So, we'd be dialed up and shit. Nope. And so, I didn't know. I got worked out by the Steelers as a DB a safety. The Patriots Just sent a out, ball player, man. <laughs> Just a ball player. The Patriots actually sent Ivan Fears out, the running back coach, first. And they worked me out as a running back. And then they sent over Scott O'Brien, who was the special yeah. teams. Remember Scotty O? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So they brought him out to see if I could catch kicks and punts. And then, then they sent out Chatty O or someone else to uh, see if I could catch the ball. And so they worked me out three times. That's like not really heard of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I mean, yeah. and all the other teams were kind of just working me out as a receiver or an athlete. And that was the year the Wildcat was like huge. Yep. You know what I mean? Because in 2008. Miami. When, yeah. With uh, yeah. Ronnie Brown. Brown yeah. and, and Cadillac Williams. Yeah. Oh, I think Cat so. Or no. Yeah. No, they went to the same college. It was Ronnie, Ronnie Brown, Brown and, um, and Ricky? Ricky Williams. Ricky, Ricky Williams. Williams. Yeah. He had just Ricky. came back from yeah. his hiatus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy because that would have never happened now. Like, what would, I don't know, whatever, but yeah. Yeah. So I was, I had, everyone was, I was on everyone's radar because of that. I, I mean, I ran for like 1,500 yards in my senior year and I threw for like 
almost 2000. So like I was like a running quarterback. And so like a lot of teams were working me out to see if, cause that, you know, you know, there's always the NFL fads. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The wildcat was big then. So people were working me out for everything. Did you ever actually get a chance at a wildcat? Were you running it at all? We had, when, when Tom got suspended in was 16 or 16, Mm -hmm. Jimmy G came in, Mm -hmm. he played the first two games, hurt his thumb or his shoulder. And then Jacoby Brissett came in and, there was no other quarterback, so I was like the backup quarterback. Gosh, how fun was that? I only got one did you play. Feel, did you feel like uh, I, I was? I was getting ready. I was, dude. Getting, yeah, I can make. It's my man. time. I was thinking dude. at least I probably couldn't throw the ball, but I could make those D linemen miss all day long. When you got drafted, <laughs> Tom was just coming off his ACL, ACL, right? Yeah. Was there ever a thought in your head that hey, if this ACL recovery doesn't come, no shot. I, <laughs> <laughs> My first day at OTAs, man, yeah. I saw like the third string quarterback dropping dimes. I was like, I can't make that throw. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, start running these routes. <laughs> yeah, start learning how to run. The NFL just X'd me out of ever getting a quarterback opportunity. I always used to see like first QB goes down, second QB goes down. I'm like, I got, I got a chance. I could do it. I get one more. And then the second quarterback never got injured. So I just kind of sat there. And I don't even think I've ever actually been the like the guy that would come in because we've always had a we running back. Reception and t- yeah, well, Andy doesn't trust you anymore. He doesn't trust me with the ball <laughs> at all. You are Mick Lateral. <laughs> Dude. You give Mick Lateral. Talk about Lateral. Lives we we make fun time. of the Lateral roulette. I see you in a game. I'm like, is this motherfucker about to. Hey, how, what's on the time? They're up two scores. Is he trying to. No, he ain't. I see you trying to Lateral. Die, that you couple just, there's the one to Shady is my favorite. Huh? The one to Shady is my favorite because <laughs> it happens so quick. Like You just catch like a little button, like little Go curl. On. And then he's just sitting there, and he's just, oh, I'll that just throw this to that guy. One, not a chance. <laughs> I'm just lucky like, how Shady did you know was looking Shady at me. Shady was going to be there. I saw Shady in my peripheral. I just caught it and I was like, I got a guy right here. Shady looks like he's open and I just tossed it to him. Did he have red gloves? Is that what you caught? <laughs> so in like walkthroughs, do you, you like, you know, like all the, the time. You're like, yo, hey, just keep and, an eye. They don't, they already know. In walkthroughs, I catch and throw it to somebody. It's like throwing it yeah. around the horn in baseball. You know what I mean? I'm making sure everybody gets a, gets yeah. a throw. Everybody's seeing the ball come to them. It's just like an extra way to just keep everybody involved as you're yeah. going through walkthrough, going through practice. So I'm always just like non nonstop, just throwing. I'll throw it to a lineman if he's downfield. Got it. Just to have don't some fun that. with it. That's a Orlando idea. Brown is notorious for like, don't fucking throw me the ball. <laughs> he's got so much tape. You see these guys, how much tape we got I on? Threw him got the ball. Things I threw him thumbs, the ball, so they literally time. don't move. And I've never seen. <laughs> I've never you don't seen have a opposable guy, thumbs. You can't put that on this. Guy. I've never <laughs> seen a guy catch a ball with straight palms. Like he didn't use his hand, his fingertips at all. He just tried to sandwich the ball with yeah. his hands. I was like, like yeah, I'm never going to fucking toss you the ball in the game. But Fish, Eric Fisher, he he used to chase me down all the time. And literally one game, it was in the playoffs. I think it was I think it was Jags. I forget who it was. It was like a big third down. I wasn't sure if I I was like right on the line. Yeah. So I was like, pitch it to him or just like make sure you get the first down. So I was like, all right, I'm not going. But I was literally, I locked eyes with him. Tight end though. He was a tight end, right? He was a tight Central end. Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Little yeah. 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 Maxon, Mac- baby. Mac- that Maxon, Mac- baby. Mac- Daddy, Brian Mac- Kelly. Mac- yeah. First yeah. overall pick, man. He was. That's crazy. He never played tackle, right? No, he only played tackle. Well, oh, in, in he, college. He played yeah. tackle in college. He played tackle so in college. He was a convert. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. what year, but he converted to tackle. He converted for sure. But yeah, no, I remember locking eyes with him, and I got the first down, and he ran straight up. He's like, you were about to fucking do it. I was like, you felt that. All right, make sure you feel that next time, too, because I just had to get the first right there. Oh, What is it about changing positions, though, that you think you can still play that? Like, I legitimately in my head still think I could have played like linebacker in the NFL or like running back because I played it in high school which there's no fucking chance I realized at one time I picked up a fumble behind the line of scrimmage and I'm like I'm about to now it's my time mm-hmm. the DB got on me so fucking <laughs> fast and I don't even know where the DB was at like I picked Eat it up it. and I, I broke that tackle I did get him it, but it was like I was gonna stiff arm him and it was like before I could even extend my arms like ah <laughs> and I was just a quit? fat guy kind of twirling around and broke that tackle, but then I went down quick. The spin is up, boys. He did. I remember that one. <laughs> off him. I it think it was you running the ball once. It was recent, last couple years. No, I think uh, you caught a you caught a fucking like. You're thinking of Garrett deflection. Bradbury, Ma- the Minnesota center, caught a huge uh, deflection last year and ran it for a bunch. I bet it hasn't happened to me. Trust me, I'd remember it. The only one I got is that fumble. I got a, a personal foul getting on a fumble against the Raiders. That boy. 
That's about it. Any more? Dan Conley. Remember One that? of the best. Do you remember the that? Uh, yes. On the kickoff return. Yes, the kickoff return. return. When they had the wedge Legendary. guys. Legendary. Because a lot of times when the big guys get the ball, wedge, it doesn't dude. end up good. God damn. Bring it dude, back. How many, how many big guys have gotten hurt getting torpedoed? On the wedge? Well, not just the wedge, but picking up a ball. Like oh. I've seen oh, so yeah. many linemen pick up a ball, think they're going to run it, and cock out, and then they're like doing <laughs> ass over tea kettle. Wasn't there another Patriots guy that like tore his ACL on the sideline? So maybe it was a different team. No. But either way, I just always. Not. Either way, the Dan Conley one was was impressive. That was crazy. It was like a long return, and it, it was wasn't like, like a fluke. Two yards. Yeah, he didn't score though. It was so close. It was like what? three yards. Yeah, third. Yeah, we used to get pictures in the hallway, and he had like a picture of him like smiling, cheesing. <laughs> Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports my whole body health. That's right. You might not believe this, but I drink my AG1 every day. Why in the fuck would you ever drink AG1 every day? Because uh, it's good for you. I gave AG1 a try because as an NFL player, I needed a way to get all of my nutrition uh, going in one simple to take solution uh, that supports my entire body and covers my nutritional basis. Oh, so if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D. That's right. And five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. That's right. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Check it out. Check it out. Alrighty, today's video is brought to you by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. And the NFL season's almost here. And we have a special discount. Of course we have a special discount and a secret promo code for secret. the 92 percenters. You can only get it right fucking here, ladies and gentlemen. I guess it's not so secret anymore. Yeah, well, it is a secret to anyone outside. Don't fucking tell anybody unless they listen. For a very limited time, 15% off any NFL ticket. You heard it here, folks, for a very, very, very limited time. This will not be a... It's going to be a very limited time. You get 15% mm -hmm. off any NFL ticket. It doesn't matter if you're a first-time buyer or not. Jason, which Eagles game would you recommend to these wonderful 92 percenters or anyone that hasn't been to the link before? Oh, if you haven't been to the link, uh, any game. He ain't lying. Just click the link. <laughs> click the special link in the description. <laughs> Sign in, and the 15% off discount will be auto-applied to your account. That's right. You got to click that link, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. Jason, finish this shit. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you purchased on SeatGeek before or not. Click the link in the description and save some money. It doesn't matter! 15%, 92%. All right, now. You get drafted by the pages. What were your first impressions walking through the door? I was terrified. See, it looks like a terror. It's like you're walking into like a fucking... I don't even know. It's like an intimidating... The Death Star? Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. No, you're, but it, you're in the Republic now. Yeah. It was even crazier to me, like, when you're, like, a late-round guy mm -hmm. and you're playing the numbers game yeah. right away. Right. And like, how many receivers are they going to take? We had Randy Moss. We had Wes Walker. We had we just traded for Greg Lewis from Philly. Yeah. We had uh, Joey Galloway. We signed him free agency. He was an old Joey Galloway, but he still cooked. We had Sam Aiken, who was special teams captain, so he wasn't going nowhere. I was sitting there, like, after the hiatus of, like, yeah, I just got drafted, to, like, damn, how am I going to make this goddamn team? So that's when I just started hanging out with Scotty O, and I just did, made myself valuable, like, like, hey, can you cover kicks? It's like, I'm covering kicks. Hey, can you you know, be a personal pump protector. I was like, sure. Like I just try, I, I tried everything. I was, I was a backup holder for like five years. Like yeah. and I would go meet up with Scotty O at like 5.30 in the morning. This motherfucker would make me come on at 5.30 and he would give me the whole day of what he was gonna coach during special teams meetings. And I had to be in those meetings too. Yeah. So I would hear what he would say and then I would be in the meeting. That was the thing around the Patriots. They'd always say the more you can do. Right, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I, I was just trying to do that and then just learn and make plays when you had a, a, a chance to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then. You know, one thing led to another, and I ended up making it. I didn't know everything about the JUCO. You're playing quarterback in college. Did you think you were going to get drafted? Did you expect in New England, or was it kind of up no. in the air? So you know how the draft process goes. You, yeah. you do your pro day, then you start getting 
interviewed or you get tri- tripped out to teams. I went to San Francisco. I went to Chicago. I went to Miami. I went to a bunch of places and New England didn't bring me in, but they worked me out three times. And I was like, fuck it. I, th- I think I'm going to Miami. I'm going to be a dolphin. Hey, you know, and then South they, Beach. You know, I was like, I fell in love. First time. <laughs> Florida, you know, I was like, damn, this place is crazy. It's, nice. yeah. it's real nasty. It is. And so I was like, uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to be a Patriot. And so like when the six round came, my agent started hitting me up and he's like, yeah, you know, I got like five teams on online for priority free agent. If you don't get drafted, Niners, Packers, Bears. And we made a decision. If if I were to go undrafted, I was going to sign with probably the Packers because they didn't have any kind of slot guy or they needed a power returner as well. And we were just looking for somewhere I could potentially make the team. Yeah. Then my agent hit me up and he's Don Yee. He represents Brady. Okay. And so, like, he goes, you know, I deal with the Patriots a bunch. They made a seventh round trade. They got a couple more picks. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not saying they're going to, but I wouldn't be surprised if they How about pick that? up. Don Yee calling it. And then, cool. I got, then I got a 508 call from Bears, and they drafted me. Right on. How about that? Bill fucking, he, he picks up the phone. He goes, yeah, I don't know what you're going to play. You're a good football player to see tomorrow. Or like something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, thanks, Bill. Good to meet you. Yeah. I'm fired up too. <laughs> yeah. I talked to him once in like mini camp. It was a principal, you know, you, you just kind of like stay away. <laughs> yeah. You don't make eye contact. He might ask you a question or something, quiz you on something. I was so terrified of that dude. Because <laughs> he would always quiz everyone. Like, you go like, hey, Edelman, who's fucking 72 on the wall in rookie? camp i go I, I don't know coach he goes that's matt fucking light the guys only played nine years has three fucking super <laughs> sitting there next week i'd appreciate it if he knew his fucking name like i'm like <laughs> i have heard about so, this though this so every great. after that after that one motherfucking every rookie went and got names of everyone from all the like cleaning staff, the cafeteria people. He goes, Who's, you know, he'd ask you everything. Well, this one, so I was going to ask you this. I heard this that at the start of training camp or OT or something, you would get like a like a book with everybody's picture and name on it. That's new. And you had to remember it. Yeah. So this pre that where you That's had to actually that. figure it out on your own. We had to go out and fucking Google do search. your own research. Like, yeah, <laughs> like go to the, the uh, football ops guy. Yo, who give me a fucking printout, everyone. Yeah. And yeah. media people, everything. Give me, I, I, I want everything. That, and they'd always have like these little sayings and shit Mm -hmm. you know and you had to know those you know do your job ignore the noise speak for yourself don't believe the hype when you come in the building be attentive standard brainwashing (laughs) 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 it it works though hey it's good hey can't deny it 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 was (laughs) you know after that whole when you guys won that super bowl oh gosh and lane went up there i know oh said what he said yeah i didn't care but like we went in the locker room and shit like the next season coming in yeah, guys are like oh you know like, you hear what he said yeah it's not fun here yeah and so there's a bunch of people saying shit and so I went on the chalkboard and I just put winning is fun, fun. and did it and we Boom. ended up leaving it there the whole year and we ended up winning the Super Bowl there. Well and Hell yeah. and I, I don't know know if anybody else watching Bill's post game press conference in nineteen when you guys beat us in Philadelphia. But the first thing Bill said after the game was Man, that was fun. Like, and we knew exactly what he was referencing. Yeah. But like nobody else probably picked up on it. But you know, hey, it worked for you guys. He has used his motivation. So <laughs> good old bulletin board material. Bulletin board material. That's another thing that he does, Belichick. Yeah. In the off season, he'll sit there, he'll read like press clippings of what certain other teams are saying in the media, like you'll hear like a, a receiver or some guy on a team and he'll say like, you know, we'd be disappointed if we can go to the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. He goes, fucking Super Bowl? It's fucking March. Yeah. Like, how about we just get better? Like, he just annihilated. And he, he's basically telling like, all right, guys, shut the fuck up. This is not what we're talking about. Let's worry about, you know. Today. Today. Yeah. He's so funny how you just get on these guys. Like, I anyone who it. says something in the media, he, he picks up on that shit. Uh, no, no taken <laughs> <laughs> fucking Belichick I'm still scared of him I've never met him or talked to him but I think I'm a little bit of scared, scared of you him. would love him though you're a football guy if you're a football guy you love Bill yeah because he loves football guys yeah my perception of Bill is this hard ass like 
old school coach. But then you see like the clips of him joking around with guys. Yeah, he jokes around with guys all the time. Yeah. But his joking's not always funny. It's like, look, I've seen fucking LT. You think you're good? Like, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> he can humiliate you very easily with just his knowledge of the game. Sure. He's got a dry sense of humor. Yeah. A lot of guys don't know if they could laugh at his jokes, but he does say a lot of funny ass shit. He's funny and he's fun when it's okay to be fun, but he's, you know, it's, it's a business and he wants to win. Yeah. That's number one priority. Why do you think there hasn't been so much success, I guess, with some of Bill's assistants that have gone like other places? It's tough. You can't you can't go in trying to, you know, replicate, replicate nah, Belichick be without own. the resume that Belichick has. Right. You know, if you're a veteran player who comes into New England for like the last 20 years, you kind of like understand what you're signing up for. Yeah. So you're going to you're going to stay in order. Yeah. So the culture has been set. Culture is set, you know, so it, it's been tough, you know, but I don't think that's necessarily true. Billy O'Brien, for example, at Houston Texans, I bet you that they would pray to have the six seasons that he had where they went to the playoffs like five years yeah. or four years. That's fair. You know, there's guys, R Romeo Cornell did pretty good. Romeo did good, yeah. I mean, Vrab I, Vrabel's not a coach, but he pretty much has that like 100%. You know, he's a, he's a, Belichick guy. I still remember that he's, matchup, I mean, man, where he he pulled the uh, the punt, yeah, the punt deal, and it I'm was sure like he's it was like there. Belichick's own mind game. Yeah, he fucking got the delay the a game so you could milk out the clock. Yeah, but I mean, it's just he's a football player right there, man. He yeah. he was like one of the smartest guys. He would Belichick would always talk about how Vrabel was like the smartest, one of the smartest football players he ever been around. There's like stories of Vrabel how he was the biggest asshole, like just like older brother asshole. Yeah, you know, like. What the right mean, kind bro? of asshole. Get the fuck out of here and go do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you ain't done shit. Like, that kind of shit. Like, super accountable guy. Like, get up on everyone. Everyone's on the table for getting fucking chewed out. Yeah. He gave it to Brady. I mean, there's old clips of him giving it to Brady and shit. Like, Vrabel, he's got like a fucking mystique figure that just floats in the hallways of the Patriots. Everyone wow. always talks about him and Willie McGinnis. Oh, yeah. Willie Holy Mack. cow, man. Yeah. Legends. And that was the thing. Like, when I was part of a new generation, Pat. So I had to, we had to hear, like, our Patriots had to hear about that Patriot team. Mm -hmm. You're going to see coming through. You, like, you're becoming, like, you know, the older guy now. 1,000%. You know, there's going to be a time where you're not going to be there and Patrick's going to be there still. Telling and, like, stories about Travis They're going to be telling <laughs> stories. Like, fucking this stories, guy Kelsey. My stories ain't going to be nothing like Braves or, but, or you Brewskis know, or, you know. If you're a younger player, it motivated a lot of our guys. Like, fuck, I'm sick of hearing about Kevin Falk, Teddy Bruschi, Troy Brown. Fuck, dude. Like, let's go out and win. Oh, yeah. Branch. And I'm thinking of the wrong yeah, guy. Dion. Dion. Er, dirty. So, played both ways. Troy Brown did. Troy Brown did. So it was Troy Brown. Yeah, he got a pick too. I didn't. I never got a pick. I was about to say. I almost picked Vince Young. How did that? How did that come about? Was it just you just locking dudes up on on like special teams that just no. translated into defense? Or Absolutely what? not. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're banged up. Yeah. At corner, I walk in on a Monday. Josh Boyer, who you know, who's DC over Miami a couple years ago. Yeah. He comes up to me because you're going to be in our meeting. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about in our meeting? Bill wants you in our meeting. Just come in our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, young player, fucking mind fuck. What's going on? Oh, my God. What's... Yeah. Fucking play DB against the Jets that week. It was, crazy. <laughs> it was nuts. Who'd you guard? Do you remember who you guarded? I, you we guard were playing anybody? a lot of zone that game. I got to tackle Ladanian Tomlinson. LT. I took out LT. Took him. You heard him, right? I think I heard him. I didn't, I didn't want to say it. But. Yeah. You never want to hurt anybody. Never want to hurt anyone. Not but, ideal. But you felt the lick, like you laid a good lick on him. Nah, I just went low on him. Like yeah. he's fucking, he was low. Lt. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> I just went low, took out his leg. Got to get the job done. Get yeah. that horn frog, man. Biting ankles. <laughs> McCoy <laughs> jumped over me when he was in Philly because I, I I started in Philly. I started against Philly. I was in like a dime personnel group. Or oh, actually, my first start was against the Chiefs. It's crazy. And then we played Philly. Philly yeah. Who was the small running back? Charles. Jamal, Jamal Charles. Charles. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I was he's slithery man. I had to cover him so they they made this because bill's notorious for like his personnel groups on defense yes. so like he had like five six seven dbs out there because they had the jamal charles and they were hitting him in the flat and on those little arrow routes and shit sure. so like they put me on him they said wherever he goes you go and the next week i had to go play against uh philly who did they have what year 11 yeah this is my this is your rookie year rookie year 
Yeah. But you guys had... Um, Gerard Mayo. With Gerard Mayo, but there's another D-tackle that wasn't very good, but he talked a lot of shit in this reason. I remember and he was drafted to but, Cleveland. Yeah, Gerard. Yes. All he did was talk shit the whole game, and he had some good ones. He had some good ones. Will Fort. I forget, yeah, Will, Big that Vince. That is a load. Dude, huge. Yeah, so we had Jeremy Macklin. Macklin. I had to cover Macklin, and then... Uh, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson. I almost I almost picked a return route Dude, that was, he ran. was Chad Hall on that team? I don't think he played later. the game. A couple years later. Shout out to Chad Hall. He's yeah, Shady, Shady was crazy. He jumped over. He jumped yeah. over me. Dude, it was insane. M- McCoy, I tried to tackle him. He jumped over me. Like, what the we fuck? We saw what you did to LT. Yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> know he's watching film. Yeah. yeah. Boy, Shady. Fucking Shady McCoy. So, uh, we, I do, we, so we've man, had this debate. Is What do you think is harder, DB or receiver? I never played DB. and I, I could cheat because I knew concepts and I knew mm. situationally. This guy's like, just a fucking ball player. You man. know, you could just, cheat yeah. because... I knew on third and three, what's their go-to player? What's his go-to route? Yeah. So I would like, I would cheat and hold for five yards. You could get away. You can't expose people at the line of scrimmage Mm-mm. if you don't know how to do it. Yeah. Like, you'll get locked up by a good corner or a good, you know, someone who can cover. Yeah. It's hard to do everything backwards. I like defense because you get to go out and hit things and it's like, there's less rules and there's less. Like, See ball, get ball. It's more like instincts. instincts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So offense, you have like everything has to click for you to get the ball. Oh, yeah. Like he's got to block this, that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I like playing receiver. He likes scoring touchdowns, but I think I could have played safety. That would have been. I think I would have knocked myself out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Sanders. Remember Bob Sanders? Oh my gosh. Gosh. Like, completely oh, electric for like, what, three years? And then it was just like the injuries piled up. Like six like, games a season. And yeah. Got paid. Dude, yeah. Nobody wanted to play Bob Sanders, dude. He was like 5'8, too. Just a bullet. Pow. <laughs> Primarily, obviously, play receiver. Do you think New England kind of revolutionized the slot receiver like position? Like, what is it about that offense that the slot is such like an important piece? They definitely did. I mean, it started with Troy Brown. Yeah. Dion Branch jumped in there for a little bit, and then left, went to Seattle. Then Well kind of brought it to a whole nother level. Yeah, Danny got Danny in. Danny came huh? in, mm-hmm. and then you know it. it I think it's because the game changed to more of a space game. Mm. You know, like it, the evolution yeah. of the game. Yeah. So, like, you'd have these tweener guys that were, like, running back receivers that were short. Like so a wide like, receiver tight end yeah. that really isn't, but he's kind of like a tweener. Tall, yeah. A lot of tweeners. Hey, this, is, this is actually what I think the Patriot way is, to be honest with you. Dude, Bill is the master at finding guys that are good at, like, a specific thing and utilize. He does not like, we're talking yeah. about personnel, like, but on defense. You see it where, like, there's guys that might not necessarily, like, in another defense be that good, but in this defense, they're f- fucking awesome because Bill uses them to their strength. When I think of Bill, the master of, like, personnel. Definitely. Yeah. 12 personnel is around because of us. Man. When we oh had man. Hernandez and Gronk. That was shall not so, be named. He was so <laughs> yeah, funny. That, that dude, they you were so watch fun to routes. watch. Are you oh, kidding? It's insane. Watch it's those insane. things. Those he had he some of the dog. You run routes like him. You give a crossover at the top right, of the route like him. Let's not be so excited. He was home. dog. I'm telling you. I tell you. I know. I know. He was good. You can't deny it. <laughs> he, was, he was insane. But like, take it back. He loves. It's a matchup game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, yeah. when we started throwing out three receivers with, like, Troy Brown and Welker, and you put the, you know, the, the slot in the three spot, and you're getting Plus lined speed. up with the linebacker against quarters, which mm-hmm. is kind of like a man coverage. He's mm-hmm. trying to take away your inside. You cross his face. There's nothing over there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's all these little things that coaches that do what they do just keep on doing what they do. So, right. why not take advantage of what they're doing? Yeah. Are you guys not surprised sometimes when you play a team that there's does no way what they're they still do? Doing yeah. This. And, you just roast them up, yeah, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names because I'm still playing. But god damn it's it, a couple, it's, it's, there's, it's lovely. There's some there's <laughs> DB coordinators out here that I'm just like I'm licking my chops every 100%, time I'm playing. One hundred percent. You know you're getting at least nine balls. Yeah, <laughs> Coach Reed's going to dial that thing up on second and five, and I just know they're going to be sitting in cover three, <laughs> or cover four, and I'll be backside manned up. Well, and what's crazy is we as offenses try to dictate these to deep. Like if you see a defense where you know you can get them into a specific coverage, a, like they have a check, like at the moment you go one by three they're checking to this we you design it off of that mm-hmm. bill does the same thing on defense all this dude does is build five man fronts get you into a five i'm, I'm speaking for an offensive line but know. it's so fucking annoying especially because like the master of 
um, tweener guys, right? High Tower, Jamie Collins, all these li- bigger linebackers. Not Nikovich, or Nikovich was one there for um, Spikes. No, uh, Spikes got the, in there. he was Spikes. there. Spikes was unbelievable, Spikes. but he didn't. He, Spike was like a dog. He, dog, he no, was literally the like hardest a hitting. Yeah. A car, like he just. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, if you want to get spikes, all you gotta do is play action. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's coming. Someone, he's be, playing that run. Spikes used to light our. No, but like guys up. he gets you into the man coverage, knows you're going to man block it as an offensive line, and then they just run three and four man games, uh, it, which is exactly the kryptonite to like getting guys in space and building these man blocks. So I don't know. I feel like it's very team defense, though. Yeah, for sure. Because I remember we'd always have like defensive ends that would come in like on the tail part of their career. We don't have to name names. No, <laughs> there's a. <laughs> <laughs> but they would get mad. Yeah, they yeah. would get mad. Be like, well, I can't rush. Yeah, because yeah. we would always, you know, it, it, like you said, there's a lot of games where like we're not somebody's letting the got fucking to keep quarterback out of the pocket. Yes, yep. you better do not patch the quarterback. I don't want a gaping hole. You know how many times I heard that from him? Yeah, because he would do it in front of the whole team. Yeah. And that could be part of the Patriot way too. He we'd have every morning we'd have probably like a fifty play cut up of all three phases, and yeah. he would break down every one of those plays in front of everyone. So if you're on defense and you heard about an offensive guy getting motherfucked, you'd be going in the hallway and, be like, and you'd hear someone say like, "You got to get your depth on that motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> you got an offense, you like, yeah. aren't you supposed to set the fucking edge? You know what I mean? So yeah. like, you're That's creating fun. competition. Hell like yeah. that could be it too. We you played the majority inside, but you played outside too. You saw what Welker did. You saw what Amendola did. Was there another evolution when you and Tom found that connection? I think it was I feel like you guys, you ran a lot of the underneath stuff that Welker ran and Amendola ran, but you were running deeper route. Yeah, Yeah. you know what I mean? I was versatile. I knew knew all the positions. I knew the F, the Y, the Z, and the X, you know, and and they, they put me in at the H sometimes. And you're starting to see a lot of that, like with a lot of the teams now, they have a guy like Debo or something. I put yeah, my name yeah. in the same name, Debo or anything. The same guy. But like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> moving guys, and that goes back to the Belichick thing, using guys' strengths yes. and matchups. And that's kind of what it really was. You know, I was able to get open on the outside and, you know, that made it better for the inside because once I went inside, then there was more space. And, you know, then you get older and you can't run the same, you stay inside. <laughs> you know, that's how it gets. Yeah. But I, I don't know if I took it to another level. I think it's all part of the evolution. It's all part of the evolution. It, it, it was the it was the Julian Edelman level. It was like what you could do and uh, the, the the fact that you were so unique and what your strengths were. They they found a way to do it with you. Yeah, and I think also because you know being a I was a former quarterback pre snap reads. Yeah, know, man. It was it's always the pre snap, the post. It always felt look. like in zones. You just knew exactly where to be. I tell every receiver every tight end that comes in the mm. or just comes in contact with me that asks me how I'm so I'm like I know what I have to do based off of what that QB has got going on back there. It was a blessing. I didn't pay attention too much in that quarterback room, but I know being back there <laughs> what that feels like. You know what I mean? So in terms of timing, the sense of urgency, and then slowly you start to understand defenses and realize, oh, wow, he's reading the defenses. This is his progression. Well, people don't realize there's like three pictures of, of a play. You have a pre-snap read, which the defense can dick with you, the safety or like the safeties can move or the corners can dick with you and yeah. stuff. And then there's post snap where the safeties have to get to their lanes yes. um, unless you're Troy Polamalu who just fucking go <laughs> does whatever he wants. Want to, but like those guys can't Thank lie. God corners can lie. Guy. Huh? Thank God I didn't play against that guy. I'm, He's a monster. I'm trying to think of what that defense used to be called. You had the free roamer, uh, rock, like I don't know, whatever. I know exactly what you're saying. And, yeah. and you know based on the pre-snap one, usually if they're faking they're going to this right so it's like right away it's going to be one of two things if this guy stays here it's this if he does this it's that it's processing information yeah. you know and it's preparation we all get the tendency reports mm-hmm. all right on second and fucking two they 60 percent of the time they're going to run this there's 30 percent time they're going to have this and there's like three times when the guy was a defensive coordinator at fucking uop yeah he ran Love those kids zero you know what i mean like <laughs> so you have all that in your head the poor guy that had to go all the way back there and cut that up and upstairs. <laughs> Shout out to the analytic guys, man. The stats guys, oh, they're watching so much fucking film, getting numbers. I see it with your play all the time. Like, just on technique on who's covering me, I know the coverage. Yeah. If, and if, if if he fucks it up and I see the safety and he's inside and it's supposed to be a single high look where he's got man cut, like, then I have an easy outbreaking route. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the game's evolved now where they put in so many, like, two option type. Like, we'd have a play called and I could run, like, four different routes 
much. The lore of the Patriots offense being difficult for receivers. You had four routes that you could run in one play. Yeah, the jiggle route. It's nuts. First cover five, you could bring it across. You could whip it in, bring it out. Versus zone, like single high, you have to sit up in the curl flat area. Versus Tampa, you want to get out and just turn outside. It's like, undefeated. Yeah. It's undefeated. You yeah. can't lose. Basically, do whatever you want or do whatever you should do. Yeah. Do whatever the quarterback thinks you're going to do. Gotcha. There you go. Gotcha. There you go. It, ultimately, like they used to get so mad at me and Tom because on the paper, it would show certain things. And like, I knew that there is no one occupying this area. I could go dip over into that area. Yeah. Tom would really like it if I just <laughs> no, he'd go, over there. <laughs> 100%. He'd be like, hey, babe, just get open. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right. Well, that's Pat's number one thing. Somebody goes to him, hey, if it's cover three, I should run it like this. And like, just get open. <laughs> <laughs> just get I open. I mean, that's dog. a good rule of thumb. It's <laughs> number one rule. <laughs> Let's not if overcomplicate open, I'll throw it to you, dude. <laughs> but also with like man coverage, like young players, people don't re- like, you only need space and depth for zone. If it's man coverage yes, and yes. you got a crosser, just get the fuck across when you have to get across. And if there's a rat, get across him and you're going to get the ball. As long yeah. as you're not fucking up somebody else's as route. As not fucking up another line You're, yeah you can get open yeah you got some you freedom know, like a lot of people don't realize that yeah a lot of people I, i've what i found out is a lot of people are scared to do that and and the be coaches, wrong yeah exactly i mean you have to yeah you gotta play with you, you gotta be willing to take yeah i've but yeah. you also got to has told play. me plenty yeah. of times not to do shit and i don't do it until <laughs> it's time to do it um you know what you remember that i threw a ball against you guys yeah so that wasn't a design play wait what do you so so i yeah, the tutty. What? So he ran a post. He was supposed to take out the safety to bring him to the other side because we had the tight. We had the running back screen on the back side. <gasps> yeah. So this we were, is how I threw a fucking pick. Yeah. Keep going though. Night before the game, we're doing walkthroughs and shit. I get the ball and we play with this little lacrosse ball and like the hotel thing. And I get it and I'm like, hey yo. Philly, what? And I hit Phil. McDaniels goes, don't you fucking think about doing that. <laughs> oh my I go, coach, what if he's wide open? He goes, just throw it to the fucking screen. So we go to the game, fast forward to the game. We couldn't run the ball at all. We couldn't do anything. You guys, we couldn't get anything going on offense. And so we had to throw something out there. Yeah. We call it, I forgot who it was, but he broke through the, the, the lead blocker that was supposed to block for me. And if I were to flip my hips, I'm getting hit while I'm coach, throwing. I got to get it out. I saw Phil out of the corner of my eye and I fucking zing into him. He gets knocked out, but he scores a touchdown. I run over the the fucking sideline. McDaniels goes, you're fucking dangerous, Everett. You're fucking dangerous. You're fucking dangerous. That's so fucking funny. It was Damn, fucking yeah. crazy. So they uh, they installed a um, a play against the the Giants for me to throw. Like It was, it was kind of like a bubble screen. Moved the formation, put the tackles on the numbers a little little screen to me as soon as the tackles went to the numbers they went cover two and the deep shot was over with Tyreek was supposed to slide through the middle of the field he took what I thought was both safeties and I was like but there's Demarcus backside and I just know I peeked over there yeah. and he had about five yards of separation on the corner because it's fucking cover two yeah. didn't even think to look at the safety in the middle of the field I didn't even look at the safety I fucking hucked it but the whole time you threw a pick yes his it did was, not end. I just is, threw uh, a punt. I threw a punt. He was they dangerous and he was not Maverick. He was good. <laughs> I was not Maverick. <laughs> I was oh, not Maverick. Yeah. Yeah. Man, there's two sides of the stories every time, baby. Yeah, that's electric, man. You got to make some plays to make those kind of plays, though. Yeah. Like You, you got to have some merit and yeah. you got to have some equity. We were on a two-game losing that streak. That probably, and it was the fourth quarter, probably wasn't the best time to do that. Shit. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Coach. Please. So you get drafted. What are your first impressions of Tom Brady. Dude's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tall and handsome. I literally walked in through the locker room. I had my big ass like 20 inch binder of plays because we used to have playbooks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 I walked in, almost dropped it. I'm like, damn, he's tall. He's handsome. <laughs> Well, you got Giselle. <laughs> hey, I'm Julian. He goes, hi, Jules. I know you're Tom. I'm Tom. Like, I was like, yeah. I was like, damn. And then I remember the first day of practice, I saw this dude throw a ball. I was like, yeah, he's good. Buttery. Just, Just dropped it right over the corner, a deep one to Moss. Yeah. And when you got to see that connection as like oh a, a young player, I can yeah. only imagine. It was fucking crazy. And then you'd see little Welker and he'd zip it like they were on a sink. Like, I don't think a ball hit the ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys see that probably now. My first couple years, I came in with Alex Smith. 
and Alex was very, his progressions were true. He had the ability to, to do a lot with his legs. Sneaky. I called him Scooter, man. Yeah. Scooter? I never called it to his face because he was <laughs> he was older you're, and I was a yeah, rookie and everything. Rookie, yeah. But he could scoot. He could get out there and run around. He did it at Utah all the yeah. time. Yep. He was very precise on like the, the reads and everything. And that's where I started to understand like getting on the same page as the quarterback yeah. even more and more and understanding defense will help like me be on the same page with him. Now with Pat, the understanding of the structure and then the ability to just freelance and just obviously it's a it's a structured freelance you know when and when not to because of what everybody else is doing out there on the field i feel like what you were saying earlier about tom being able to tell you hey jules why don't you just hit it hit an out route or whatever it is when you first got to the league was it like that and by the time you guys were leaving New England, where was it at? It took me years to gain his trust. That was like the thing with Brady. Mm -hmm. When you're a fucking technician that's been doing it at a high level for such a long time, like he already had like 11 years in the league when I got there. Right. He yeah. had three Super Bowls. Yep. You know what I mean? When you're a guy like that, you don't want to waste time. Every rep is something to those mm -hmm. guys. So they want things done a certain way right away, the way it needs to be done. And if you don't, they fucking just I'm done with that. Give me someone that knows what they're doing. Yeah. You have a built-in pressure that you're like, oh, shit, I can't fuck this up, you know, as yeah. a young player. And so it took me years. To get comfortable, huh? To get comfortable. It took me reps with him, which I didn't get a lot with the team. I moved out here because of him. Hmm. Because he used to live out here. He used to train. We had the same agents. And I always heard about him having Wes and Randy out here. I went up to the residence in in Manhattan Beach right off the one and fucking lived there for three months. He called me one time. I told my agent, yo, let him know I'm in fucking town. Mm -hmm. I want to throw. And like, I was a nobody at that time. So he wasn't going to, you know, like he had his thing and it's probably political. He can't have, I don't know, but yeah. he called me once and fucking, I went out there, dropped everything, came out the next year, you know, called me a few more times by year three. You know, we were throwing three or four times a week and that's where I got to learn what he liked mm. and he learned my body mechanics. So he could tell when I was dropping my weight or how I was going to make a cut through reps and repetition. He could see my body language he started to learn my body language and once you get those reps in it's then you throw in a defense and you start getting more reps against defense then I become his eyes and he trusts me so much that if I turn out this way and I go like this he knows there's not a defender out there even if he doesn't see it yeah if he throws me in a certain area you know I know that's you where trust the trust that, yeah. is built yeah. yeah so you know you it's kind of like being reps, eyes man you don't get that without reps all you young guys out there are like I'm I'm huge on finding a way to get out on the practice field no matter how my body feels i need i need to feel the the defense i need to feel the the timing with the quarterbacks and i don't it doesn't matter if it's a route that i've ran a million times i know it's gonna keep me in sync with it all and it's gonna just keep building in terms of like the understanding and the trust and like you were saying just being comfortable out there everyone needs to listen to that i mean i swear if i didn't play in new england i'd still be playing because we practice so goddamn hard yeah that's honestly why i retired i couldn't practice yeah, I was getting three three reps of practice, and then I'd go get in the pool because my knee, you know, like I was fucked up. Mm -hmm. And you build your confidence through practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, practice repetition becomes game reality. Yeah, the more you do it in practice, and that's crazy awesome to hear that you love to practice because it's becoming a dying breed. And that's why football is getting sloppy. Yeah, I don't care what anyone says. Football is getting sloppy right now. You know, and that's why teams like your team they have a fucking a light head start. They, they're so far ahead. Of everyone, and you're, both your teams yeah. they have such big head starts on teams because they don't practice and you guys have great leadership clearly mm -hmm. where guys want to fucking practice and if you're practicing and he's practicing no one else can't not practice yes, no. you Everybody's know what i mean and yeah. that's how you get good and like with the lack of practice that you have in the off seasons with the rules and stuff yeah. football has gotten sloppy yeah dude i mean Somewhat. We, we don't practice that much. <laughs> Dude, Jays, I knew I was waiting for it. I'm like, I was God damn it. it. I fucking am on know, this, and I agree with everything he's saying. But <laughs> veteran Wednesdays. I, I, I talked to Ray Lewis about that. Yeah. On, like, Thursday practices, he would go out there and, like, flip-flops. They'd be full padded. I could be botching this, but he just would go out there, and he would just sit in the where the linebacker position was. He wouldn't move, but he wanted to feel it. So, I mean, hell. He wanted to feel it fucking mental. Rep. That's a hard. real mental rep right there. Yeah, man. That's when you know you got you, you're the man. Yeah. You, you get to go Everybody else is out Everyone's there really practicing. You're out there. there. <laughs> Just feel it. Jason, you gotta do it. What's Ray Lewis doing? I don't know, man. His CT's catching up with him. <laughs> <laughs> 
He wore flip flops out to practice. Nobody hit him. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nobody. I worked with Ray. Yo, I worked with Ray on this Inside NFL. I wish I got to play with him, bro. Dude, Every he time he talks like, uh, before anything, it's like a gladiator fucking speech. Just a pregame speech at all times. Ray, I know you get half your material from the gladiator. I, I started listening to what you're saying. <laughs> half of the lines are from gladiator. <laughs> half of the lines are from gladiator. Those eyes get big and you just know some knowledge is about to get blessed upon you, man. He can say nothing and I want to run through a wall. <laughs> I know, but like, what are you saying? Yeah. The, like his voice inflections and shit. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking about to go shoot that show. <laughs> nah, but fired up to do the show now. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh, man. But that's why I retired. I couldn't practice. Yeah. I mean, I've never heard the body mechanic stuff. Like Tom would just know by the way you were moving, where you were about to break or, or when you were going to break. And that's why that timing gets developed. Without yeah. a doubt. They were doing it all year long, man. Not just, not just in season, man. Like he's saying, they were doing this shit in the off season, getting those reps in. It's not uh, just happens that these guys were great. You know what I mean? Like these guys were getting after this shit. Yeah. I've told this story before, but I don't know if you guys heard it. I remember it was 2014 right before the season. We just lost an AFC championship to Denver. We started training in like February and he had the location of the Super Bowl on his whiteboard in his gym. And I didn't, I was like, I was like fucking naive. I didn't like, what is this? He's like, it's where we're going to be playing the last game of the year, bro. Like, <laughs> I go, I'm going to help you catch Montana. You know, because this is when he only had three. Yeah. He looked at me dead in the face. And he goes, I ain't catching Montana. I'm going for Jordan. Ooh. Ooh. And the motherfucker did it. He did it. That's crazy. Surpassed him. You guys can do some shit like that. You never know. <laughs> Patricio Macopa is... Pretty good. He's pretty He's fun good. to play with, man. My favorite thing about Pat is the off the cuff, like once the initial play is done. Yeah. The play with It the is play. get jiggy time, man. If that ball isn't out, seven step, boom. Like seven step, bounce, bounce. I'm doing something right now to do because I just know his like improvisation or however you fucking say it. His ability you know to what, improv. He's, he's going to move on. Oh my gosh. It is. And if you know the concepts and you know the coverage, you know where motherfuckers aren't. Yeah. And it's just like time, to, time to get jiggy. Time to get jiggy. Dude, I remember hanging out with Pat once. It was before he was a starter. We were at a Super Bowl. He was still Alex's backup. Mm -hmm. He was a rookie. He was like a kid. Like a little kid drinking a bunch of beers and shit. Oh, he's still. He's still. Like he's still the cool same way. Every time I've oh, seen him, <laughs> I haven't seen him since. He does, he does Other than after games, but. he does have that like that high energy, love for life, and then just you absolutely pounds Coors Lights. Looks like a great you, fucking man. leader. Oh, every single day, and he'll he'll get on guys. Yeah. He'll get on guys if you're not running as a receiver. He'll get on you. He no. he needs those reps, and he feels how valuable those reps are, both in games and in practice. And I mean, there's a reason why he's fucking great. I'll tell you what man the guy is as athletic as he is and as good he is, as he is at like the improv and everything he is about as nerdy as it gets yeah i'm what? talking about i pulled up on him we went to like a significant others like volleyball game so i go up there i'm actually watching the game I'm like where the fuck is pat like I, he said he was going to be up here it's like a tuesday during the season he's in the car watching film and like looking up at uh, at the volleyball match like every like two seconds just to see it I looked at the fucking notebook and it looked like chicken scratch I couldn't fucking I can't read anyways but I couldn't read a single word couldn't put it out and he had an entire binder full and you could tell he was going through that shit yeah. and I was just like man this guy's studious as fuck you know what? I've never been able to take notes and looked at my notes and read my notes and been like that makes sense and you could tell he, that he does it week in week out and he's just very He's doing studious. It a volleyball game. He's freaking doing it all the time. Dude, everywhere. Or just hate. And the thing is, his mind, the works fast enough, his mind works fast enough that he'll actually be able to like look up at, in between plays and still be able to like. It's crazy. You need I, a little nerd in your quarterback. You need for sure. Nerd. Yeah. Has I, to have a little nerd. That's why, that's why I, I hate taking notes. It. That's why I didn't make it. Did you, Let did you, my arm were you big note taker? Uh, yeah, I took notes. I, dude, I don't know why. I, I I miss stuff when I write down notes. I like seeing it and watching it. And if I sit down to write something, I, I like miss stuff. I have all my notes from all the years. I re, I used to write down oh, that's everything. Golden. I've Can been going them? through it and like it's. Can pretty, I read them? I don't Can know. I, just... I, might, I might get killed. 
<laughs> yeah, like you got too much inside or information. Or fucking bill or something. I might. They got. They got some shit out there. They might get me. But so we have. We've been trying to log. I have a couple like, games you played defense. Do you have the notebook for those? Just, <laughs> like, write down what Bill was telling you guys in in meetings. It, but the thing is, they're the game plan team. They yeah, it's going to change week. every week. Oh, of course, every week. Yeah. Personnel groups. <laughs> Dude, your impersonation of him is classic. Look, you it's- asshole. You know what I'm saying, asshole. Look, assholes. Look, you fucking asshole. And he always say, like, we're not on this program. Like, he always says, like. Yeah. Like, we're not on this fucking program, all right? I don't care where you're from, what school you went to, this, that. Just shut the fuck up. Like, God damn. But like, in a, I, love it. I love it, dude. In a funny way. <laughs> yeah. There's something about coaches. That this, would be like to a like younger that, player. Though. Sure. Yeah. Like, you know, this isn't like fucking Alabama where you played Louisiana Lafayette Tech of institution for like <laughs> your third week game okay this is the national <laughs> football league like he always gets on all the like the big school guys yeah. for like you have like three games that are just throwaway games yeah it's like brings him back down every week uh, he's probably changed though you think so maybe he has to you got to keep evolving man you yeah that's it. a good point you do have to keep moving forward we got to ask but you don't have to answer. Like you could just tell us to fuck off if yeah. you want. And uh, we got to ask, but you don't have to answer. Uh, brought to you by our friends at Accelerator. You had one. You 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 digging this? What you think, pop, dude? You digging it? Yeah, it tastes like a rocket pop. It's Ooh. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> does, it get you, does it get you fired up right now, or what? Plant based. I'm not too jittery. I just threw a dip in, so maybe that helped. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a good spitter, wide mouth. Goes good there with dips. Go. Zero sugar. No sugar. Pretty get good. Get your plant-based <laughs> thermogenics with Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Um, I don't have to answer, though? No, you do not. You can you pass. Don't have to. You can pass. I mean, you don't have to answer anything, really. I mean, free country. Did you actually take Jerry Rice's daughter to prom and try on a Super Bowl ring? Was that real? She took me to her prom. Ooh. Ooh. And yes, I, I did to wear those Super Bowl rings. That's awesome. Sorry, Jer. <laughs> I used to go into his office all the time. He was never home, so I'd be over there playing with balls. <laughs> I saw jerseys. I, it was crazy. Jerry Rice, bro. I was a Bay Area kid. He was a fucking legend. Yeah, man. I mean, the record setter himself. It was, it was so crazy, and they had such a cool house. Man, <laughs> I remember You're the in first a flashback time, right now. First time I met him. Dude came out yoked up, six packed up with his chain on. He had his like his fucking dreads that are starting back here. He was the old Jerry by then. <laughs> Oakland Jerry? Oakland Jerry. He intimidated the fuck out of me. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't well, having it. Which I understand. I have a daughter. I have a daughter. I'm a father of one. Patriots making the playoffs this year. Ooh. We were talking beforehand. You, you think the Jets are the real deal this year? I don't know. I mean... We've seen this happen a few times or some, you know, like I know I mean, just Brady went year, over. Denver. To, Russell Wilson goes to Denver. They're stacked. They're exactly. in the AFC West. Exactly. I mean, it, it started with Brady going to Tampa, winning a bowl first year. Then Stafford went over to L.A., won a Super Bowl. And then we had, you know, Russ go over and didn't cook very well in Denver, the altitude yeah. or something. So I don't know. Like it, it, there's a lot of hype on this team. Yeah. It's not like. They're fully loaded on offense. They have some playmakers. They got Brees Hall, who's coming off the ACL. They got a good the the Garrett Wilson kid, who's Wilson. really good. Love watching mm-hmm. him play. But like, they haven't had a lot of reps together. Right. He's playing in a tough division. You got a pissed off Allen. You got a pissed off Bills. Mm-hmm. Like th- those guys are humiliated right now. Right. Miami's about it as didn't end well like, Miami, as anybody. In the- I really I can, think see, it- I can see Miami taking a step back. You think so? I I can see it. Dude, I, I thought because if, they they were they why would they start seven zero last year? If, if Tua was, didn't get hurt, they might have won the AFC last year. No, I mean they would have been in contention, dude. They were killing it early on. But was that a fluke? They just, I don't kinda, know if it's a fluke, but you know December and November football is different. It's different. That's a good point. It's different. I see them taking a step back because they have so much hype around them. Gotcha. There's like always that one team where they're supposed to be good and something ha- like what? What is it? Forty percent of the teams that made the playoffs last year aren't going to make the playoffs this there year. Were, there yeah. was a run in Jacksonville where they. They were supposed to be the – I mean, their defense was always that. But I feel like when – We played them in the Super Bowl, we beat them in the AFC Championship. Dude, I'm They were really good. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, Leonard Fournette. Yeah. So, I guess I was wrong. Right. That I, was one of the only years they were really good, though. That, they were really good. Yeah, they were good that year. We, we went on a flute. They always had a bunch of studs on defense. <laughs> Is 28-3 and three the greatest football game of all time? 
I wouldn't say it's the greatest football game of all time. I'd say it's probably the greatest comeback. In the Super Bowl? I mean, that may, I mean that alone. The Super it's Bowl insane. that you guys played against us. Was that was a great game. Dude. I mean, an unbelievable game. Yeah, there was like 500 yards the offensive. On well, I guess not if you're a fan of defense, but the offenses were well, cooking. Yeah, man. Gosh, I remember being absolutely shit faced in Minnesota for that game. <laughs> I was too. I, by the end of it, I was like, <laughs> I was hurt. <laughs> Dude, girl, I was hurt. I had Amendola chance going where I was at. Like it was, it was fucking nuts. <laughs> Holy cow! Golly, I remember at the end it was like, did they win? <sighs> they How cold won. was it? Oh. It was Dude, get into that game because there was no easy way to park and get to that stadium. It was like you had to walk through all of the fucking the streets and everything just to oh, get to it. Do the skywalks? They got all those skywalks and. Yeah. <laughs> when you're hammered, you don't, you don't know that. that. <laughs> Which Super Bowl would you want to run back? The loss to the Giants or the loss to the Eagles? I didn't play in the Eagles, the Giants. Giants, that makes sense. It hurt to lose the, but like I. When you're out there, it's different. Yeah. It, it, it feels more. It feels more. I got you. I didn't even play that game. Either. I was starting DB in the AFC Championship, and they fucking hosed me. They wouldn't let me play because they were all talking shit that they were gonna come after me and stuff. <laughs> Fucking didn't even get any reps. They didn't even return a punt or anything. They didn't because we had all plus fifty punts, and that's when uh, what's his name, the the yoked up punter, Janikowski. Yeah, that one. Yes, he, the, he was. That was the he old Russian guy. guy. He was he a beard up punter. Yeah. That dude had a big old. No, he was a kicker. Yeah, I know he had the he had, he had the beard. Lefty, right? Yeah, yeah, lefty for the Raiders. He was yeah. drafted in what, like the third round or something, mm -hmm. or first round. He was a first round draft pick. I think you're right. I do believe that's correct. I want to see kick it like some seventy weather. yards. Of, I mean, he was unbelievable. Like he, he played for like eighteen years. Mm -hmm. Nah, but uh, probably the Giants. Giants. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Well, you were talking about DB. Um, who's a better DB, you or Gronk? I'm going with me. <laughs> I'm going, dude. At least an open field tackle. We all so my, dude, my I'm, I'm that. I've been that for for us, and that's arguably the scariest moment that you could ever be in. At least for me, because I, even even when I was like on teams, my like first couple of years, I could not tackle to save my fucking life. I lettered in, in in high school snapping to Jason on punt and being the first one down there one-on-one -on -one with a returner, zero tackles. And when I tell you we didn't score much, <laughs> we were punting the fuck out of the ball. <laughs> and I had zero, not even a half, zero. That's the scariest moment <laughs> to ever be in. I <laughs> feel so bad for him because you guys were, it was on the 30. It wasn't even like he was supposed to like deflect the pass. No, I don't know. Hill Mary's coming, guys. Get back. To Gronk. <laughs> I, I, I don't under, we won't get into that. Yeah. But I'll tell you. Gronk, I feel for you, dog. You got to scallop. You got to keep your feet going. Scallop. <laughs> he, got, he got stuck. He got stuck in sand. Pick a side. Use a side. Make yeah. him one sided. Scallop. Keep your feet moving. Don't keep him in the ground where he's going. We used to practice open field tackle every week in New York, in New England. Till the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, going sideways. <laughs> every week. Yeah. You guys would be in there. We'd be doing open field runs and tackle. Tackles and shit, but yeah, you gotta gotta keep the feet going. You heard it here, folks. We just talked about the twenty-eight-three game. In that game, you had one of the most unbelievable catches in Super Bowl history. Yeah. Where does that rank in like the greatest catches in Super Bowl history? Fuck your shit, I don't know. I, I mean, the Tyree helmet catch was pretty fucking cool. Julio had a really good catch right before it. Ooh, the one Remember on the sideline. Yeah, yeah the side yes. You know, mine, that was a reactional type. Santonio San Holmes in the corner of the end zone with Ooh, Brad, with against ben Arizona. Yeah, that. that oh, was a game on the line. It was a reactional type play. I don't know. I'll let that for other people to decide. I think you're being modest, but yeah, Smart that was. I'm, I'm putting it up there, dude. That fucking was un incredible. Dude, electric. He was lucky. <laughs> the, Honestly, I'd rather be lucky. I get what you're dead. saying. I get yeah, what you're saying, but I don't think anybody else is getting lucky in that situation. To be lucky, you got to put yourself in a position to be lucky. You got to have the mindset to be lucky. How many other people are diving over three guys to get that ball? You know, middle read and the DB on inside leverage turned his eye to the quarterback, you're like, oh, fuck, we lost the game. Yeah. So I was just trying to go back there to bring it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. I, one thing led to another, and, you know, you just keep your eye on the ball, and good things happen sometimes. Yeah. Big time moment, uh, baby. I had to drop that game, too. We don't, crazy have, to, we don't have to bring that stuff. That's what you think about. Not, you yeah, think yeah, about bro. that more. I think about the third down drop, then I did that. Yeah. That was a raw ride guy come out of fucking halftime. We're going to be able to story, guys. Uh. Drop. Drop. <laughs> yeah, man. Fine. Fuck. That's the worst. We were down 21-3. to three. He went to 28. Damn it. And the third down? Routed him on a little cross. <laughs>
So what, did you try to just take off? I tried to run before I had it. You know, <sighs> so you know, know. sometimes you get too excited. You just, you, yeah. No, Ray I Lewis did. You just like. <laughs> I'm not saying anything bad about Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Work with Ray. Which fan base do you think hated the Patriots the most? Jets, Falcons, or Colts? Did you feel it? Did you feel the hate? From Falcons? No. Falcons automatically out. I tell you right there, so it's a team that's not on there, the Buffalo Bills. The Mafia. Bills fucking hated us. I've never been flipped off by uh, the widest range of age from people from three years old to 90 years old <laughs> after going into Old Orchard and fucking beating the Bills. And it would be like, it was like a, a ritual thing. Every time you would go in there and win, there'd be people with like confetti flipping you off, throwing it up in the air. Be like a, a little kid You're like under with it. it. Yeah, there'd be guys jumping on tables, hey, flipping Jules, us hey, off. Jules, hey, Jules. Yeah. Hey, you want my glasses? Uh, fuck you. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> I'm not giving you no Rudy's blue cheese then, buddy. <laughs> Buffalo stuff. Man, nah, those, it was fun. They really hated us, though. I love a good hostile environment, man. That's why I Your love guys, it. I tell you right now, when we played you guys in 18, that was crazy. Was a banger, man. That was, that was crazy. Banger. That was my favorite win. That wasn't a Super Bowl because we never won on the road in the playoffs with, you know, with before then. Mm-hmm. Everything was you know, at home. Everything was at home. And when you go on the road and win a game yeah. in the playoffs, plane ride back. Arrowhead was on another level that game. Dude. Man. I was in it. It was rocking. We got our ass beat there. Remember the Monday night game? You were there too. That was, my, that was my first Monday night game. Yeah. We got our ass beat there. They were rocking. For an in outdoor stadium, that Seattle. Yeah. Those two right there are, are like fucking re- way loud. And then like we went, we played New Orleans one year in 2009 when they dome. fucking. A whole different world in a dome, man. And the New Orleans people are nuts. They yeah. had like the umbrellas and shit. Ba, da, da, da. Everybody <laughs> yeah. comes to the game with the trombone and trumpet. Yes. <laughs> it was fucking fun though. I won't play them up. Cajuns just hopped in off of Bourbon Street. Yeah. Liquored up. I couldn't understand a thing they were saying. <laughs> Give it to us, Jules. Are you a Hall of Famer? Ah, I don't know. Yes, you do. What gives you pause? Your fucking regular season Super numbers. MVP. Yeah, but look at the postseason numbers. We'll see when it I don't matters. Know. Most. I mean, you look, I, it's it's tough. You know, it's tough. It, it's it's honestly like it's one of the best ball players that have ever graced the fucking shield. Yeah, but it's it's uh, what can't he do? Did you ever kick a field goal in no. practice? Nothing. No, Welker did though. Yeah, he did. He did. He was a soccer player. Was he? Yeah, he was good. Figures why he didn't help you, a soccer guy, not a football guy. (laughs) What? (laughs) Well, I'll answer it for you. You're fucking in. I did want to ask this. We we didn't get to it, but I got to ask you. You didn't make any Pro Bowls? I made one. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How many times were you an alternate, but you couldn't go because you're in the big dance? Twice. I have one jersey. People, I have one. You do? I have a jersey, and I got the check. There you go. Yeah. That counts. I'll take that it. Thing, I'll take it. <laughs> Bought a few bears at that thing. Hey, put that thing in my pocket. <laughs> you save. Invested right in some it's stocks. It's not what you make. It's what you save, boys. All right. There we go. This might be our favorite Dude, episode we've ever it, done. You man. You're fucking, a beast. You are, you are fucking awesome. awesome. I've been a fan. I've been watching all your guys cut up on social. I, I haven't listened to a whole one, but I, I watch you guys all the time. It's awesome. All the good stuff is on social. So. <laughs> you don't want to say that, though. You, you're yeah, gonna definitely watch the whole episode. Bleep that out. <laughs> you know, all the best stuff is on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> show with one S. Comment, like, subscribe. Games with names also. Ooh, Dude. games with names. Season don't two. forget it. Season two. You got to tie that the thing Kelsey in. Bowl yeah. on. No, Kelsey Bowl coming on. Kelsey Bowl. Let's would, go. Would love to get that thing turned, brother. Love for you guys. That, I mean, talk about thinking about scheduling? mistakes in the game. You got it? Yep, it's in. It's in. That's a, that's a pen. That's pen in, inked. Listen and subscribe wherever it's your podcast. Obviously, we'll be dropping new episodes on YouTube each and every week. So make sure you're subscribed to the New Heights show. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, brought to you by our friends at BW3's Buffalo Wild Wings. We love mm. you. Delicious. And your delicious sauces. Uh, follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S for fun clips throughout the week. We're going to have a plethora of fun clips for this one, baby. Um, thanks to our production and crew, always looking out for us. And, uh, Uh, to the 92 percenters for tuning in baby until next time peace what's your favorite bw3 flavor dude it's a great question gosh i'm i always go yeah
God, let me, uh, lemon pepper. I like barbecue sauce. Yeah. Which one, honey so like, or sweet? I like I honey like, barbecue. I like the honey one. I always, so this is my order when I go to any wing spot, especially BW3s. Yeah. I have to have an order of medium buffalo. Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Yep. Eat like two of those. Need a ranch and a blue cheese. Side to the ranch more than the blue cheese, but I want to taste the blue cheese to see if it's good. Yeah. <laughs> then I got to go this barbecue. Dialed. This man knows his freaking This guy's works. dialed. Got to. You got to. Then you got to go barbecue sauce, right? Mm-hmm. I like I like the sweet. I'm a sweet barbecue sauce guy, so I like the honey barbecue. Mm-hmm. And then I have a, a, like an auxiliary or like a like a w- w- a like one off like a what do we used to call it like a mixer back in the day? Like if if a team had like one play of Blitz Zero, you had their one mixer. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. one mixer is the the what is it? The lemon garlic, Parmesan garlic, Parmesan garlic. Yeah, Parmesan the garlic. one mixer. So I was. I mean, that's pretty much that's my order to a team. That's my order to a team. I, I will go lemon pepper as a switch up. I switch up the mixer but i do always get some of the honey barbecue got it always get a medium or a buffalo yeah depending on where you're at buffalo wild wings right, um, and then uh i'm always blue cheese though yeah exclusively i always, I always sneak a barbecue bacon burger in there with fries just to separate the BW3s, wings you're, yeah all right yeah hey, I, I love you bw3s but i'm a burger connoisseur i'm not even gonna go to <laughs> all right first off i'm just letting you know <laughs> you're open to trying new burgers. <laughs> Start with a BW3s. Barbecue bacon burger slaps. There we go.